Hey everybody, and welcome to the next episode of It's Bananas with Jeremy Fisher. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video uh, and to the channel as well. Um, guys, this happens every Monday at 9 a.m. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Today's guest is going to be Dan Rosen. Thank you so much yeah, for coming out. Thanks so much for having me out on the yeah, show. Yeah, I'm really glad that, uh, that you came out to, to do this. Uh, how long nice. have you been doing comedy for? Uh, I'd say, like, really seriously doing it the last three years or so. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, and then there's, like, some on and off time. Mm -hmm. I first tried it, like, 13 years ago. Did, like, three or four sets. And then did, like, yeah, like, sort of, like, a mic where there was, like, a... It was in, like, a dank basement bar with, like... The like like water, like yeah, like, but it was like the water like dripping off of like a pipe in front of me, and people were like going there to have a quiet meal, and then be like, "Oh no, there's comedy!" And then I was like, "Oh, I can't do this." And then years later, I came back and be like, "I'm gonna do this." Yeah, and so yeah, that's awesome. It's funny how it's just like, "Oh no, there's there's a comedy show yeah. going on." And that's like the biggest thing when you ever go to like a comedy show that's not an actual room for yeah. comedy. So if it's not yuck yucks or absolutes, it's like people are wait. There's like a comedy show going on. Yeah, I think like yeah. They I'm, do that around here. For sure. There's sometimes where I'll be like, yeah, like where it just happens like that, and other times where I kind of want like want to be like, oh, like can you like put up a sign or something to like prepare people for? Yeah, I feel well. It's also time. it's also on like the the producer's job too to let people yeah. know like, hey, by the way, in like an hour there's gonna be a comedy show. So if you want to stick around, do it. But like yeah, bring yeah. in like new people that are coming in. Like they should definitely like, have some flyer or something like that to let people know yeah. that like hey this is going to be happening yeah for sure i mean it depends because and sometimes it works out i remember once uh, i was at a show actually a couple of weeks ago out of town and it was uh yeah like it was a specific like saturday night comedy night and there was a family there that they were like responsive to when the like, comedy started and i guess they saw that there was like a stage with a microphone and then like, near the end, like, the headliner was talking about eating ass and then asked everyone at that table if they ate ass and then found out that they just wanted it and didn't expect there to be a comedy show. Mm -hmm. They were very good sports about it, but it was just, like, really funny where, uh, yeah, just to see, like, how that happens. I think, like, you have to, like, but, like, yeah, the host, I think, did a good job of, like, just easing everyone into it, be like, hey, like, if you weren't here for comedy, like, don't worry, it's going to be a good time, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Have you definitely noticed, like, a big boom in, like, the amount of people doing comedy shows in Toronto? For sure. Like, it just, I mean, even when I start, even, like, when people talk about, like, 10 years before I started and saying how it used to be just kind of, like, yuck yucks and maybe a few other, mm -hmm. like, a couple absolute, other spots, and absolute, like, and, like, and, like, comedy bar had shows, but not nearly as many as they do now, mm -hmm. um... And then now, like, it's, I mean, that like, comedy bar alone has, like, four to six shows a night. And then there's going to be, like, there's a lot more bars and, like, uh, different places. Which, on the one hand, it means you can do a lot of gigs, which is great. Mm -hmm. But it does mean that there's then just, like, so many comedians all the time. And so it's hard to, like, sometimes it, you really have to push to get yourself out there. Yeah, but it's also hard, like, doing, like, the random venues at, like, bars, let's say. Because sometimes they have, like, music playing. Or sometimes there's people talking in the background. Or there's, like, oh, pools, sure. like, people playing pool in the background. And it's, like, it's very distracting. And, like, it feels like not a lot of the people are, like, actually engaged into it. Yeah, for sure. Like, there are times where I've gone in, they'll be like, oh, by the way, you're competing with, like, the Leafs game on TV tonight. Mm -hmm. but, and, like, or they'll have told me, like, like you're booked, just know that this is going to be the case. Like, all right, cool. Like, got to be more interesting than, like, the oldest hockey team in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you could definitely do that. I mean, they haven't won for the past, what, 65, yeah. years? I don't know. Like, and well, people and, have literally yeah. gone their entire lifetime of, yeah. like, not seeing the Leafs win and cheering from, since, like, the day they were born to the day they die. Yeah, it's true. It's it's a funny thing because, like, on the one hand, like, I get excited. Like, I love the Raptors winning last year. Yeah. But it definitely affected, like, how many shows I got booked on. Because then all of a sudden people would be like, Look, there's like a huge game. We have to cancel tonight's yeah uh, show. So it's one of those things where like, uh, on the one hand, like I get excited for Toronto, and then on the other hand, I was like, oh, I can't like all our teams just like do really well during the regular season and then just like tank the playoffs so that like it's easier to get people out to like comedy shows and yeah. stuff like that. There's, yeah, it's definitely yeah. hard, especially since we have like the Toronto Raptors and the Leafs that are playing. So like double the. They, yeah, they have shows like every single week sure. that you're seeing because it's like if it's not uh, the Leafs one night it's the Raptors the next night and they just keep going back and forth back and forth yeah. so it's like really hard to compete like unless you have like a really good show and you have like like people that know that oh I'm gonna go to like Yuck Yucks to see a really good show because like with them 
they're always like selling out like all of their like Friday yeah. Saturday nights because it's like people that actually want to go see comedy for sure or yeah. it's just like at a venue at like a bar or something it's like people that probably went there to go see like the Raptors players like yeah. the Leafs players it's like by the way we're doing comedy yeah what yeah and I think a lot of the time like if there is like if it's a playoff game then they'll just say like look we have to like cancel that show because people are and you kind of have to I think uh, unfortunately roll with it that like yeah. yeah, like, you know, like, it is, like, people are always going to care more about, because, like, you'll have, I was talking to Andrew Barr about how he said, like, because you'll have bandwagon fans for sports teams who will just be like, oh, like, our, like, local sports teams doing really well, but you won't have, like, bandwagon fans for comedy shows necessarily, where it's like, oh, like, this, like, local comedy show is doing really well, like, everyone's all going to go into it and yeah. be like, oh, I always love them, and buy, like, a t-shirt for that comedy show and yeah. start, like... I don't know, like, practicing that person's bits or whatever. Like, mm-hmm. unless, like, that person's on TV or something like that, then it's yeah. hard. But, like, I once had, like, Mark Little headlining one of my shows, mm-hmm. and I was so sure that, like, it was going to be a killer show, and it was, like, game six of the first time the Leafs won the playoffs in ten years, mm-hmm. and so everyone was just watching that game instead. Yeah. Yeah, and even, and, like, even, like, Mark Little, who was, like, like, really it was really nice and like a super good sport about it and he was like yeah it's all right like he says like this is what happens when there's like a big sports playoff thing yeah yeah, yeah so you're mentioning that uh, you have your own show um the opening act with dan with dan rosa yeah every it's once a month right it's once a month so it's the okay. first wednesday of each month and wednesday actually isn't too bad of a day i find because it's yeah. like in the middle of the week so usually people after the weekend are like monday and tuesday yeah we're just gonna stay in mm-hmm. and then I think often, like, on Wednesday, people will be like, all right, we could, like, go out for yeah, the friends night. be like, hey, yeah, let's go outside, yeah. let's go have some fun tonight before, yeah. like, the weekend, like, pre-weekend, kind of, like, fun. Yeah. So, like, how long have you been doing that show for? So that one is, um, that will be three years in March mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. Um, so that's, so that's nice. It's exciting. And I do really like Comedy Bar. I think it is a very, like, supportive venue. And Gary has really helped me try and find a time... Gary, who runs the bar, has really helped me find a time that works well for me with that show. So that's yeah. been really great. And he and it's um yeah, it's been a fun thing. Like it's taken a while to figure out like, you know, the formula that I think works best, mm-hmm. uh, to get, you know, like different acts. And sometimes it's not even just stand up comedy, I'll have improv or sketch. I had a magician so you, on the yeah, show. You just once. do whatever kind of yeah. like works out best for It's you. mostly stand up, but I like to throw in yeah, like something yeah, else that will be Yeah, for sure. And like mm-hmm. if someone had something that like they're like, this is funny but it's completely different then I'll be like, Yeah, sure. That's it's like let's see yeah, it. I, actually, I'm interested to yeah. like find out about it. Yeah. <laughs> like I want it to be a bit of like like to stuff where like the headliner will be the person who hopefully will be the main draw and the person who I can be like rely on like Regardless of what happens leading up to the end of it, mm-hmm. the headliner will be the person who like you know makes it like makes everyone laugh and closes out the show really well. Yeah. And then I'll just do some like hosting and you know like the whole title of it, opening act, Dan Rosen is me pretending to be like humble and like yeah. get like, but then also to like ride on the coattails of my friends who I know will be a draw, and then mm-hmm. throw in like like if like a couple people are still like working stuff out or trying yeah like working their way up kind of thing yeah so yeah. how do you like uh, the whole producing game like is it, like yeah. you you started it three years ago but that's also when you started stand up three years ago no so. I started yeah like because I, I started stand up I guess a little before so maybe I've been doing it a bit more than three years but like yeah. I was fairly new and I had done where I hosted a like fundraiser for a short film I wanted to make mm-hmm. and so I did that and it went well I was doing improv at the time so I didn't really do any stand-up material mm-hmm. but then that was a lot of fun I enjoyed hosting and then when I started doing more stand-up I like just wanted like there was like comedy bar I had like someone last minute drop out and I'm like oh I'll try my hand at doing a show there mm-hmm. and then worked at it but it was like one of those things where at first like I didn't really know what I was doing and I was just sort of fumbling around trying different formats Mm -hmm. and then now in the past year this past year i found like i sort of a setup that i really find works best yeah um and so that's so that's been really good and you have like no problems like selling out your show like do you sell out your show a lot or is it kind of like a hit and miss like it doesn't sell out but it like we almost always except for two sports playoff game nights and maybe i can't just blame them yeah. But other than that, like, at least I turn a profit and I can still, where I can still pay 
all my comedians and That's then good. also make some money. Yeah. But it usually has like a good amount, like thirty people or so, which is nice. That's and really good. So yeah, which is which is fun and I really like um it's like a nice atmosphere where I try to make it that not necessarily like too like it doesn't like comedians don't have to be like, you know, super clean or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's also like a fairly enjoyable thing where the people go there, like usually I can guarantee that they'll have a good time and it's not gonna be just like I don't know. Someone I mean, like someone all of a sudden goes off on a racist rant or something yeah. like that. Or like they're attacking usually, the audience. Yeah, just, like it's stuff, like, it's usually like I would be like, yeah, like you know, this is a fun. You can sit up front and not worry about someone like making fun of your like how you look or whatever. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Unless you want that, because some friends would be like, oh, like they're not gonna attack me, are you? I'm like, no, no, no. It's stupid. It's like I don't mind if they attack me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ultimately, it depends on the person, but like yeah. I feel like with some people, it's just like they'd rather not be attacked. Uh, like for, yeah. well, I guess for like most people, because then you have like the hecklers that I'm like, oh, please attack me! Like I have something so good. Yeah, to do, right? yeah, yeah. You always have to I find like when you're a comedian, I guess like have that like one or two lines that you have, just in case someone heckles. And I've been pretty lucky; I've never had any really bad heckles, other than maybe sometimes like people talking throughout your set. Yeah. But I've got um, uh, I've yeah, like so I've worked on a couple of that, but like luckily there's never really been any main heckling at my show which is nice i think usually people just want to be like like sort of sit down and laugh and yeah, that's like it just entertainment yeah, yeah just which is nice i think the, the i always joke that the worst happening i got was it was my mom's birthday so was <laughs> i was gonna be like oh, it was my mom <laughs> it was my mom yeah. Uh, yeah and she said like stop it you're wasting your life I keep uh, telling you yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i told you to go into accounting um, no, so she'll, uh, so it was her birthday and so I was talking a lot about her mm -hmm. and at the end of the show I was saying like, you know, like shout out to, uh, you know, Alex in the tech booth, shout out to, you know, everyone on the show who performed for you and like shout out to you guys for being a great audience and there was this couple who I'd never seen them before, they just had come to see the show mm -hmm. and, uh, one of them goes, and shout out to your mom and I was like, what? And he's like, cause it's her birthday and I was like, oh, that's like the sweetest your mama comment I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So that was, yeah. So it's usually pretty good, I find. Yeah. yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Um, where was I going to go with this? I had something so amazing that I was no, going to say. I had in my head. Oh, um, man. We got into the whole mom. Mom stuff, yeah. I guess yeah. I about tackling <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, ultimately, like, you you love performing your, your comedy show. Like, you thought yeah. it was a really good idea. And, like... Has, yeah. it, has it really like benefited you as a as a comedian like being able to because you have like yeah. a show that you're doing like at least once a month that you know of yeah and so that's good because it even like there have been months where I've just been like stuff from life comes up and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I just uh, yeah like I haven't had time to like book gigs or whatever or I only book a few gigs mm -hmm. but then I have that monthly show to look forward to and it is something that I've really enjoyed more and more as I do it like I, there were times where I was, like, stressed and, like, it felt like a chore. But as yeah. I've done it, I've enjoyed it more. It means I get, like, a regular time to test out new material. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been, like, to be honest, like, a good networking gig. Because then people who come on my shows, who then maybe have their own shows. Yeah. Maybe, like, you know, then I end up getting spots on their thing. I mean, that's pretty much fun. what I'm doing. It's bananas. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> I've, like, I've gotten shows just from doing this because I'm, like... I, f I reach out to people like, hey, do you want to come on? People are more than welcome to come on because it spotlights that specific person. So this is spotlighting you and it's getting you yeah, out there. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, come to opening act in Rosemary. Yeah, uh, I'll actually be on that show. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Check out Jeremy in the future. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But yeah, like it is really nice to have that and it's really, um, so it has been nice like that. Mm -hmm. And I do try and make it <clears throat> be kind of just, not just like another gig, but a bit of an event. Yeah. So I always make... Um, and chocolate banana bread for like audience for the uh, cast or cast for the performers to enjoy the, the, cast. the cast. Yeah, the cast of the night. So for people to like sort of have that little snack, mm -hmm. I make sure everyone gets paid at least you know somewhat like a small. At amount. least if it's like transportation fee, because like that's all. Like if anything, yeah. I have, that's all I would want. Because yeah. like shows that are even like give me like free beer. It's like I would rather take like the six bucks for that beer just right. so I can cover the cost of like even just getting to the venue because yeah. that's the thing I care about more than actually just drinking a beer that for I sure. get for free. And like for me, like drink ticket, like I don't drink alcohol. Yeah. So like drink tickets means like I was like like a ginger ale or something like that, and mm -hmm. so I'll be like ah oh, like I don't need a yeah. drink ticket. So like I'd rather and like like after also seeing like you know people who really like also hard in me trying to. Like, I remember the first time I got paid for doing stand-up and being pleasantly surprised, not realizing that it was going to be a paid show. Mm -hmm. And then uh, being like, well, if I do my own show, I want to, like, 
pay people at least something so that way we can all have like yeah like everyone can get like a little bit of money Mm -hmm. um and it's one of those things where yeah like sort of to say because i know people have you know like worked really hard on their material or like it's something that they've really been building up to do either like a showcase for a festival or they're working on an album and something like that and so i want to be able to like be like hey i appreciate your hard work Mm -hmm. uh like here's money like you took your you took the time to come out and so like something that will be like a little bit extra there and then that's good even if like the set goes doesn't go as well they'll be like well at least they got like a delicious chocolate banana treat yeah they got they're getting something out of it at least have you ever considered like doing more than one uh once a month i've tried a couple of times and maybe down the road i'd go back to it again but Mm -hmm. i find one like it's a lot to produce at the same time and it's hard also if you're doing the second i find i've been really lucky with comedy bar because they do such a good job of especially and they've gotten better and better but with producing and promoting the shows at their venue so like they will like you know put out some like tweet like tweets about a show Mm -hmm. they you know post your posters on their website and stuff like that so they make it easy for people to find your show and find tickets to it so when i try like certain other venues that aren't as good like i mean down the line ideally i'd just be only like producing shows and performing on other people's shows Mm -hmm. and maybe also have uh yeah like or like you know if i could one day have you know a show at absolute or yucks or whatever yeah that'd be awesome but Mm -hmm. like that's still for now i'm just like holding on to the one monthly show but yeah i'd love to do more yeah so what's the like the process of like producing like a show from like before the show starts to like when the show is actually starting like how like how do you do yeah. that whole that whole process so, especially yeah. like with even booking and like who do you who do you yeah. find like how do you pick yeah. your, your your people well I, t- I try and do like a mix of different stuff so like sometimes <clears throat> um like i want to get like a mix of different perspectives so it's not just you know like for like 20 year old dudes talking about their dicks or something like yeah. that uh but i so i try and find like people who have different styles <clears throat> um and then uh so i look for that mm-hmm. and then try to so sort of mix and match so sometimes it'll be pe- like two people who has to be like be like oh like do you have spots on october and i will have two spots open but really like if they're both very similar then i'll take one of them and then the other one i'll save for you know like the next month or something like that so i try and find like a good mix of people mm-hmm. and usually people who i've seen on stage or you know i've talked to them and i'll be like hey like that person's made me laugh yeah so like i'll put them on stage um and then uh once i have yeah you know like the order yeah. booked then <clears throat> try and show up like 30 45 minutes ahead of time mostly just so i have time to relax at comedy bar mm-hmm. before going up you know like check on like what the ticket sales are if there's sometimes people have tech, especially if there's sketch or improv or something like that. Mm-hmm. So then I check in with uh, the uh, tech person for that night just to be like, hey, here's you know what this person's cues are, and then give them yeah like sort of the lineup, and yeah, and then that way I can just sort of like hang out and chat a bit with the comics before going on stage, go over what I want to talk about for my opening bit, and then I also do improv. Usually I do improv with my uh, comedy partner who I do like sketch and improv with, yeah. Josh Tibbetts. And so uh, we'll also like, yeah, like we'll chat and like get sort of ready for what we want to do on stage. Um, and then once, like I often will get nervous going up before the show starts. And then once I'm on stage and once we've like done the beginning bit, then I like, just relax and just really get into it. And yeah. Does that happen like every single time? It's just like you get really nervous before. And then like the first, yeah, like the first, minutes, like, yeah, yeah. I say, the first like couple bit, yeah. like bits, and then it's just like, okay, now yeah. I can get into it now more, much more relaxed. Especially sometimes I'll show up and, you know, there's only like a few tickets sold and I don't see anyone at Comedy Bar. I'm like, oh shit, this might be like a quiet night. Mm-hmm. And then like they open the doors and I'll hear like people talking there. I'm like, all right, I'm hearing like enough chatter that there's enough people who I can, like, you know, like, who can, like, you know, make out an audience. And mm-hmm. sometimes it's just, like, 15, 20 people come in, like, two minutes before the show starts. Yeah, and they're just like, yeah. eh, let's quickly go to the show. Like, yeah. we got something to do. <clears throat> and that's the thing. Like, Comedy Bar is great in that they'll say, like, they'll, like, advertise, and there'll be people who are, like, the show's called Opening Act Dan Rosen, and I'll, like, ask the audience, like, do you know my name or who I am? They're like, no. I'll be like, what brought you? Do you know the headline? And they're like, no. Or, like, what brought you to the show? It's like, 
we were looking for something to like something to laugh at at like eight <laughs> o'clock up, at so. Wednesday, <laughs> and you were here. I was like, sweet. Well, thanks for coming, and like hopefully, yeah, you have a fun time, like that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So there's that, and I'm trying to start to build like an email list as well. Yeah. So that way, I can like people who've come to the show then be like, hey, like get on our email list, and we'll um, yeah, like let you know about further shows because. The shows that have email lists are the ones that tend to sell more tickets because they'll be like, oh, hey, just so you know, the show's coming up. And but how many people actually, like, respond to those emails or even, like, read them? I don't, I, know, I don't know about you, but it's just, like, whenever I'm, like, whenever I yeah. just, like, randomly get signed up for, like, one of those email lists, I'm kind of, like, delete, yeah. delete, 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 delete. <laughs> from what I've heard, it's, like, when they have, like, it's not necessarily the first time, but sometimes it's, like, this, like, it takes, like, someone seven times to see something. Mm-hmm. So if they get the email... And if you email, like, a couple of times, for example. Yeah. Uh, and then on top of that, if they also get um, a... Uh, and then they see the show posted on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. Yeah. After they see something seven times, which might be over the course of a few months. So it might be, like, you get someone on your email list, and they don't come back until, like, four or five months later. Yeah. And it's true. I also, like, I'm definitely guilty of that, too. Mm-hmm. But I think sometimes it's just... Uh, like, it's almost like playing the long game. I don't know the exact numbers, yeah. but it is, like, the people who have email lists apparently do have more people showing up to their shows. Okay, so what if you were, like, to put out a lot more, like, say, content based around that whole show, like, making posts, like, every day on, like, Twitter, make, yeah. like, say, like, you're doing the 20 posts about, like, your opening act, and then yeah. you do, like, maybe 10 on Instagram, and then you do, like, 10 on Facebook, and that way you're at least getting more, just, like, every day. Yeah, Cause, for sure. Because I've been watching, like, a lot of Gary Vee, and, like, one yeah. thing that he's been, like, mentioning is just, like, you have to make more noise. So yeah, the best way to make more noise is to constantly like put out a lot of posts, put out a lot yeah. of posts. So as like maybe as a like, stand-up comedian, if you're putting out sure. a lot, because like that, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's the reason why I've got some gigs is because I'm, con- I'm like trying to put out a lot more content For right sure. now. That's why I'm trying to do like a lot more Twitter. That's why I'm like screenshotting my Twitter, putting it on like Instagram and like also on Facebook too. Absolutely. That's why I'm just trying to throw it everywhere. That way, it's just like it looks like I'm doing a lot more, but really it's just like I'm kind of like spreading out my posts, going everywhere. Because I know, I know that other people that have me on like Facebook also have me on Instagram. So there are at least the, the the chances of them seeing me do all of this other stuff is like higher because yeah. it's in like it's not on just one location. For it's sure. It's just multiple. So that's why I think like with not only the, the email doing like you doing the email, do like Facebook <laughs> like um, posts or like Facebook advertising like Instagram ads like um, TikTok is like a huge one. Yeah, I it's need like, to get on TikTok. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't. I've been telling TikTok everybody. Today. I've been telling everybody yeah, to get on okay, TikTok. Okay, right okay. First thing after this is done, I'm gonna go and finally download yeah. TikTok. Because like, what, like and another thing that Gary V like talks about is just like just like we'll go through TikTok, just like scroll through like and for like a good five hours to understand like what it is all about. Yeah. And just like whenever you come up with an idea, just fucking like film it and then throw it right on. Uh, yeah. Right on TikTok. Which is a good call, and like that's another thing is like giving people. Like, if you give people content online, mm-hmm. <clears throat> that also helps. Vong Show, yeah. who produces a bunch of really good shows around Toronto, oh, yeah. and he produces, like, a show that, like, called Rice at um, the Rivoli that I think mm-hmm. regularly sells out. Oh, yeah. Like, and I'm pretty sure he sells out, like, most of his shows. Yeah. That's insane. And he, one thing, though, he does really well is he kind of invested in getting this guy to do little, like, these little, like, comic strip yes, like yeah. one photo thing yeah, of his those. yeah like and so that's the thing it's like we've all seen them mm-hmm. and like they'll show up constantly on Facebook and Instagram and so people will be like oh like I got that free joke let's go see a show to get see like the rest of the material mm-hmm. or like you know he'll post out these little like 30 second clips on his uh, Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that and mm-hmm. Twitter and so that gets people out there and so I started doing like, a couple of things, like, I'd post, I have, like, an image of me with a mic, and then, like, I'd post maybe, like, a quote from a set, mm-hmm. I'll try and post little, like, clips from sets, and then on top of that, um, I've, because I have Crohn's disease, uh, I do, like, these bathroom reviews, okay. so, like, I'll find, like, every now and then I'll, like, post on, and usually it's, like, five-star bathrooms, I don't want to, like, put down people for bathrooms, uh, <laughs> for their bathrooms, like, because also, like, if I go, like if a, I'm, like, a bathroom review, yeah. Yeah. Like, if I'm rushing into, like, a, like, roadside gas station, like, I know it's not going to be, like, a Hilton bathroom. Yeah. But, like, trying to, yeah, like, just trying to, like, get, like, content out there. And so then people, like, so, like, it'll be, like, hey, like, this little bit thing here. Yeah. And there. And, like, I've gotten, that, I think, has helped a bit because then I've gotten more people who have, like, bowel disease issues come out to my shows, which mm-hmm. is nice. Um, it's funny how, like, 
having an incurable bowel disease has started to become like my best networking tool yeah. in a weird <laughs> way. But like it's <clears throat> it's how now I've been able to like get yeah like sort of yeah like get more focus on me and it's yeah it's something that I've been doing a lot more of yeah that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I remember you were um, you were mentioning that you wanted to start like a. Uh, like your own kind of like comedy show where it's based around people that have like um, yeah like, uh, disabilities, sickness, yeah, disabilities. And sicknesses. Yeah. yeah so I'm working on that as well yeah like are you planning that. on doing that at, like the comedy bar or like are you finding like a new well I think because unfortunately comedy bar because it, it has it, all those steps yeah, it's, not say, it's not as accessible. As, as accessible so we'll see so maybe I was yeah because I was talking to Desiree mm -hmm. about um, maybe like yeah like underground 420 or yeah. one of those other venues that are really good for that kind of mm -hmm. uh, thing um, so I'm gonna hopefully I'll get it <clears throat> yeah like I'll get that coming out because that's I think a good one that's something that I, I would like, really, really enjoy that's a really cool idea and like, I think it's nice to like yeah, like, it's nice to have a show where then people who have, yeah, like, either, like, disabilities or sicknesses can come out. Because even, like, some of my favorite comedians, mm -hmm. I mean, like, Mike Birbiglia, my favorite comedian, like, he has this life-threatening sleepwalking disorder, and he talks about that, and, like, in his latest special, he talks about his other illnesses that he has, and, like, that's stuff that I find both very relatable and very funny. Mm -hmm. Like, it is something, like, one, it's, like, this is so you can relate to it, but also, like, even if you don't relate to it, like... I have a, like, incurable, painful disease that's only fart and poop related. So it is, <laughs> like, intrinsically funny. Yeah. Like, it's, like, the whoopee cushion of, like, chronic illness. Mm -hmm. And so... And I plus, if you, do, if you do this idea, I think it's actually a really good idea for doing it. Not only for, like, the fact that it gets, like, people that have, like, diseases or, like, sicknesses to come out. But yeah. it also, like, if people don't know about, like, said maybe, like, one of the diseases right. or something, they come out. And then they have a comedian talk about it in a very funny way. They're like oh, I just gained a little bit of knowledge about this disease yeah. I've probably never even heard about. For sure. I think so. Like, as I do, uh, I don't know if I've told you about this before, but I did this little, like, a mini fringe tour where I went to a few different uh, Canadian cities to perform a show called Game of Crohn's. Yeah. So that's me, yeah, like, sort of talking about Crohn's disease. And that is more storytelling, but it is comedy for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but that, like, I'll either have people who come up and who will be like, oh, hey, like, I have that too. But then also there'll be people who'll be like, oh, I really learned something. And like in a fun way where I didn't feel like I was being lectured. And so that's uh, nice too. And I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, yeah, yeah, with comedy, when you're like trying to teach people something, and I think that's why people love comedy so much because you're trying to get your point across, but in a very funny way. And you, when you do it in a funny way, yeah. people are more inclined to like take that information in. Whereas it's yeah. like, you just have a, like a boring straight end conversation. Like that's why people want with TEDx talks. They're trying to be a little bit funny in their TEDx. Yeah, 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 for and sure. And that's why I think Jose, uh, Jose, yeah. Martin, he does like such fantastic work because he's not only like does a TED talks, but he's also a comedian behind the TED talks. Yeah. So he has like a much better way of like connecting with the audience and getting them to be like, hey, understand the message that I'm actually sending out to you. For sure. Actually, like uh, I watched not too long ago, Taika Waititi had a really great t uh, TED talk from years ago, and it's just about like. Uh, like, the pursuit of creativity, and so he was just talking about, like, and th what was really great about that, because that was before he was famous, he'd only made one movie, mm -hmm. so he was still, like, very much, like, an indie, like, up-and-coming filmmaker, and he was talking about, like, you know, this isn't, like, I don't really don't think this should be the, you know, money should, should be the point of this, and so on, and, like, he, like, it was kind of thing where, when I was listening to him, I'm like, oh, that's very true, like, or really getting along with it. Because he's also hilarious. He's just, like, jokes throughout. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just, like, a very... Like, a, like it's almost like a stand-up set, but, like, with, like, an actual... Like, with a really, like, serious, important point about, like, how to live your life and, like, you know, how to, like, live in a positive way. And uh, so that, I think, is really cool to see. And mm -hmm. so I think that is where, yeah, like, comedy... When I think of my favorite Netflix specials or my favorite comedians or even, like, the best sets that I've seen at on uh, shows, like, whether they're talking about, like, you know, an illness or even, like, Pat Thorne has this amazing, like, five, six minutes just on, like, chain and, like, junk emails. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny. And then at the end, I'm like, yeah, that's really true, Pat. You know, I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, like, super clever and funny. And then, like, it makes you think, like, huh. And I think that's, yeah. So that, I think, is really great. And ideally, I'd eventually be doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you think about like all of these new Netflix specials that are coming out? Because there have been like I I don't know why, but I've just seen like so many of just like oh there's a new one well, like 
like yeah. a new row of like new specials that are on Netflix. And I'm like, where did these even come from anyway? For and sure. Like, I've never even heard of like any of these people. Yeah. They just randomly popped up on Netflix. I'm like, yeah, okay. For sure. And it's funny because I actually, for work, uh, sometimes they rent me a vehicle and the latest vehicle I've had is um it has Sirius XM mm-hmm. and so I've been listening to like the Netflix is a joke radio and they'll sometimes they have just like clips from those shows and sometimes there'll be uh like talk shows with comedians who then are like talking about how they got on those shows and so sometimes it's just like stuff that like they were you know like touring around clubs and so on mm-hmm. and then just Netflix is like yeah sure I'll give it to you and like the, obviously like you know the really big people like they get paid like 10, 20 million dollars for their Netflix special. And then some of those people, like, they might just get, like, you know, 200, 500,000 or something like that for yeah. their Netflix special. But it is. Fuck, I would be yeah. fine with that. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, if someone said, like, I know people who've gotten. You'd like, be $10,000 on doing Netflix yeah, special like, for you. People who, like, do, like, crave, net, like, crave comedy specials that are, like, half an hour or so mm. for, like, you know, like 20, 30 grand. I'm like, that sounds amazing. Yeah, like, I would. Like, because one, like, once you. Like, get on there, that's publicity, because then you can say, like, oh, I have this Netflix thing. Yeah. And then, too, like, that's, like, that's still good money. Like, yeah. I get, ex- like, I've been excited for, I think, like, if I get, like, you know, like, more than, like, 25 bucks for a gig, I'm like, oh, this was, like, a good gig. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes, like, if, and it's starting to get more paid gigs recently, but, mm-hmm. like, uh, more, like, ones that, you know, are more than just, like, a couple of drink tickets. Yeah. Uh, which is sweet, <laughs> which is sweet. So, like, it's, yeah, but it's just kind of, um, it's interesting to see how it, uh, yeah, I guess, like, just how it all happens. I'd say, so, I, like, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's good, because whatever, like, it's not increasing the cost of my Netflix. Yeah. So, I'll, like, and the more voices out there, the more to be like, oh, you know, like, I didn't, like, I'll see the ones that I know I'm going to like. Like, I when I was waiting so long for, like, Mike Birbiglia's latest one, so I was really excited for that. Mm-hmm. But then there will be, like, other ones that are... Like check it out and be like, oh, you know, like I've never watched Ari Shafir perform, or yeah. I've never I watched, watched the Ari Shafir one. Yeah, that was really I interesting. I one. saw the first one, the children one yeah. from Double Negative, and I haven't watched the adulthood one. Yeah, but the I like the child one, and then <laughs> should go like, over and say that you like the child one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like the, the special about childhood. Uh, but yeah, like, but that like that one, I uh, yeah, so that one I thought was fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there'll be other ones that I like. I'm hoping to look at like I know like. It's cool because then there'll be things like Tiffany Haddish has her They Ready, which is yes, a special. That was a really good one. If you guys oh, haven't nice. seen They Ready, oh, watch nice. that one. Was, all of them are fantastic. Yeah, so something like that's really good. Mm-hmm. There's also, I forget who it was, but I think there was Amy Schumer had one kind of like that, not like a year or two ago. Oh, yeah. Where it had, it was like yeah. a f- four or five, it was like Women Who Kill or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there were four or five specials, and one of them was this woman. Marina, I think it's Marina or Miranda Franklin, uh, who Marina. has, oh fuck, I should know her name better, yeah. uh, because I really liked it, but, like, she was someone who then, like, I heard her on the Inside Conan podcast, mm-hmm. and she was talking about, um, and so, like, how she would, like, you know, be, like, had been, like, gigging around the city and trying to get booked on, like, you know, getting booked at the Comedy Cellar and live, <clears throat> building up to that, and so I'd seen, like, you know, five-minute clips of her on talk shows, but then to see, like, her doing a fuller, longer set mm-hmm. was really cool, and hers was really good. So, yeah, like, and so things like that are, like, they ready, I'll definitely check out. Mm-hmm. Because then you can see, like, comedians who, uh, you know, aren't the really big popular ones, but ones who can then kind of start making a name for themselves. Uh, my favorite Canadian comedian, I think, right now is Deanne Smith. And yes. they have the show De- Gentleman Elf on... The, like Netflix uh, of the world comedians of the world mm-hmm. and that one I really liked because that one it's not exactly a storytelling one but it really has this like half an hour arc to it mm-hmm. where it feels like <clears throat> like everything's sort of leading up and building up to something and it has a really great conclusion where they're reading this letter and uh, you know Deanne has a really great wit mm-hmm. and so that I thought was really cool to see and also just as like to see Canadian comedians who I've worked with, like, I was very lucky. I had to beg Deanne for, like, eight months till like, <laughs> they finally had a spot, like, you know, where they could do one of my things, like, where, like, Deanne would be saying, like, sorry, I'm booked or, like, out of town because yeah. they tour all the time. Uh, but, like, being able to be like, oh, this person who I've 
like, you know, men person as I've performed with, I mean, due to my own strings, yeah. but, like, who I, <laughs> like, who I can say, like, I've opened for Deanne Smith, yeah, who's right. been on Netflix. Uh, like, so to be able to see that is really cool. And so I think it is good. And, like, Kay Trevor Wilson and Dave Merhage and uh, Ivan Decker and uh, I forget who the fifth one is, but, like, all those comedian, like, the Canadian ones, they're all really good specials. And so it is really cool to see, um, yeah, just to see Canadian comics. Uh, yeah, like, so that they can, and, like, other comics yeah. who, you know, normally wouldn't be getting those big, like, $10 million, $20 million deals, mm -hmm. but still getting to see them on there and be like, oh, this is really good, too. Like, I could even, because even, like, that, like, I mean, it's so hard like, it's so few and far between to get to a point where you're, like, you know, like, a multi-million dollar comic. I'd settle for just, like, having, like, you know, a comfortable living. Yeah, if I could, be, bet, if I could yeah. live off of, like, comedy, I would, yeah. that's ideally what I would want to do, just so that I could put more effort into doing comedy to advance that. For what sure. Part living off of. <clears throat> so it's just getting that livable, like, wage first, and, yeah. then, and then advancing it from for there. For sure, yeah. And, like, one of my next steps is, uh, like, trying to get an agent... So that I can, like, even just, like, go out for commercials and stuff like that. Because then, like, mm -hmm. if I can, like, every few months get booked for a commercial, that's, like, a thousand bucks there. And then yeah. I did, like, a voiceover demo reel. So then that way I can also put that out to an agent as well and just be like, hey, like, if... Because then, like, if you can get voiceover work as well, like, that's great. Just, like, whatever little bits here and there to yeah. add up to things. Yeah, that's pretty much, like, what I'm, what I'm trying to do. Like, I started off of doing, like, acting, but then I... I'm trying to transition back into like doing comedy. I originally nice. wanted to do comedy. Oh, nice. yeah. So um, that's what I wanted to do at first. This was like back in like 2013. So I could have had like so many years of comedy under my belt. Right. But I was yeah. like, let's do an acting. Because like, yeah. that's what I, yeah. that's, that's one of the things that I really wanted to do. Oh, cool. So I started doing that. I got into like Niagara College, did a whole bunch of like short films, moved oh, into nice. Toronto thinking I was going to be like the next best, yeah. like, next best thing. Yeah. But uh, little did I know that there was like a whole bunch of other white people that looked exactly like me. Yeah. So whenever yeah. I was on auditions, I would sure. have, I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, am I, did I get cloned or something? Like, yeah. Why does everybody yeah. fucking look like me? For sure. And like, are you, you're Jewish as well? Or? I'm not Jewish. Oh, not no. Jewish. Okay, fair. Yeah. Um, I thought Jeremy Fish, Fisher. No, it's uh, just uh, it's okay. a name that I, I made up. It used to be Fisherberg. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nice. No. But I was going to say, because... Yeah, Fisher's not my, not my oh, okay. name that I, that I texted you. That's my real yeah, name. Yeah, I see. French, yeah. I see. Because I was going to say, like, it's funny, because, um, uh, like, even, like, being, like, my last name being Rosen, very Jewish name, and mm -hmm. being Jewish, though, but, like, in stand-up comedy, that's, like, the one thing where, like, like, even if you're, like, like, it'd be like, oh, I am technically part of a minority, but, like... <laughs> Like, ro like, just Jewish, like, in stand-up comedy, that's not really a minority. I mean, they're, thing. like, most prevalent in yeah, yeah, comedy yeah, anyway. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like, honestly, like, I wish I was yeah. a little bit Jewish. Yeah, right now, that's just because I'm, like, for, uh, not only they're good with money, but they're good with their jokes, too. They okay. know how to, like, fucking write Yeah, jokes. there you go. Well, it's, it's all, like a, all the oppression. Yeah, right, that's <laughs> yeah. it. It's just, like, whenever you see people yeah. talking about, like, fucking yeah. the Holocaust or... Exactly, yeah, or, like, that's how we got through it. Um... Yeah, and it's funny though because it's just like everybody just laughs about it, and it's just like you talk about other things just so that other people can get through, like their yeah. their kind of thing, and they're like, "Oh, you can't talk about that." Yeah. It's just like, "Why? I'm going through this kind of like, sure. time too." I think like because I think you can talk about anything. It just depends on how you talk about it. Because mm -hmm. I know like there'll be people who like there are certain bits where there'll be comedians who talk about things, like if you're like if way like where like it sounds malicious and you're like really punching like where you're really punching down on someone whereas there's other ways like uh you can um yeah like where you can really yeah like i think where you can like talk about something if you put it in like other like a certain context or if mm -hmm. you're being at least clever and thoughtful like about it too you gotta be like yeah super important about the delivery it's just, absolutely because like, also yeah like a joke written down won't necessarily be funny or insightful mm -hmm. than the way it is said in person in the context of that show and even like i remember seeing a comedian who there were a bunch of uh like you know patrons who were in wheelchairs and they're trying to get to their like spot at the front mm -hmm. and <clears throat> um there was like uh, yeah like sort of like where there was like a wheelchair section or whatever but something had been put there that was blocking there and they were like struggling and it was yeah. in the middle of this comic set and he said look can someone please get these people some fucking seats to sit down in and, like, you know, like, it could be awkward, yeah. but those patrons, they laughed, they enjoyed it, and they actually felt, even though it was, like, 
sort of like a joke about them being disabled, mm-hmm. it actually, they actually felt included in the show. Yeah. Because like I mean, like, with one of those things, like, you have to, like, at least point it out. And yeah. I think it's, like, the job of, like, the comedian that's, like, uh, that's on yeah. stage at that time to be, like, if there's something that's, like, kind of a little bit disruptive, like, you can, you know, like, you know that people know about it. It's yeah. just, like, the best thing you can do is just, like, talk about it. Yeah. Then, and like try to create like a clever joke and I think that'll like really land and it yeah. lands a lot better because it's like one of those things where it's like in the moment it's like there's no way he wrote this because it, yeah, just, it literally sure. just happened yeah for sure and like I mean because of like my bowel disease I definitely have like a gas problem I make jokes about like uh fighting you know like fighting in front of you know like with my wife and stuff like that mm-hmm. and like that's how we bond <laughs> um and there are times where like yeah like you know host or whoever performs after me will always make a joke about that and I like, even though it's a joke making fun of me and my condition, mm-hmm. I enjoy that because it's, like, one, like, it's something that's already been acknowledged, and two, like, it is something that, it, like, I do feel like, oh, I'm being, like, included in the act or whatever and that sort of thing. And, like, even, like, Ian Fergus on that show that we were doing, yeah, yeah. where he made a joke about, like, having a wife uh, being worse than Crohn's disease after I'd done my set about having Crohn's disease and having a wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, that, I thought, like, one, it was really clever and it was really funny and, like, I... Like, it's that kind of thing where I think you just have to think about the right way to approach each topic. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where... And also, Hassan Minaj, I saw him in an interview where he said uh, he really believes in freedom of speech, but just not freedom of consequence. So if you are going to, like, you know, cross that line or approach that project, that, like, you know, touchy subject, mm-hmm. you have to then be able to, like, be ready to... Deal, deal with, with yeah, whatever how happens. that gets reacted to. Because, I mean, like, Dave Chappelle's a good example of that. <laughs> For sure. Because of what happened with his, uh, what, yeah. the, stick, the Sticks and Stones. The Sticks and Stones, stones yeah, yeah, for sure. And to be honest, like... But even still, yeah. like, his last, his past, like, three have been, like, talking about kind of, like, the same kind of stuff. Yeah. And are people really surprised when he comes up with another one where he's talking about these kind of issues? For sure. And I guess he's building up to it. There's some of his jokes that, like, to be honest, there's some of the jokes that, like, I was like, ah, oh, like, I didn't like that or I didn't think that really mm-hmm. was, like, you know... And that felt more tactless. And some things where I'm like, you know, yeah, she is being, like, a bit, like, clever and insightful. I mean, even when he talks about, like, you know, arguing about, like, racism and oppression. And, uh, like, one joke that I think is really great on, not his latest one, but one of his earlier ones mm-hmm. where he talks about uh, talking to, like, Jew- he's like, you can't talk oppression with Jewish people. Because they all, like, it inevitably goes to, yeah, but, like, in Egypt. And he's like, damn, we're going all the way back to Egypt. And, like... <laughs> That's, uh, like, so, well, like, it's, like, like, I think that is, like, funny and, like, it's correct, true, because, like, at the end of the day, like, it's, like, with, like, Jew- like if you are talking about stuff with Jewish people, or even stuff like, um, the one kind of, like, stereotype, I was talking to a friend of mine, that will never get old, and I'll never be offended by anyone, even if they're not Jewish, is doing the voice of a Jewish mother, because that, <laughs> like, is always going to be funny, like, a Jewish yeah. mother complaining about, you know, the bagels or not no one calling you anymore. Yeah. It's always funny. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, like, will always be, I think, like, a universal... And it's one of those things that, like, if you do that voice, even if you don't say this is a Jewish mother, everyone knows. That's like, oh, like, you never call anymore. And what are these bagels? You didn't get them at Kiva's? Like, <laughs> they'll know that that's, like, oh, you're doing a Jewish mother right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, let's get into, like, some of the other topics that we sure. can talk about. Yeah, We're sure. Talking about a lot of, a lot about comedy. Uh, so I just, let's talk about some movies. Oh, you work nice. in the entertainment industry, so yeah, yeah, yeah we'll talk a little, little bit about that. Are you excited for any of the new movies that are coming up? Uh, the trailer for, sure. for Wonder Woman just uh, got released. I have not watched Oh, it. I haven't seen that yet. But I, I mean, like, I know, like, a lot of people, like, it, like, I don't know if it's like to sound woke or whatever, but they liked the first Wonder Woman. I, I, I really enjoyed it. I first. genuinely really enjoyed Wonder Woman. Out of like all the DC movies, like Wonder Woman yeah. was the one that actually like hit it. And I think part of the reason is, and it was Patty Jenkins was talking about how when she was working with the screenwriter and uh, other people and like, you know, the cinematographer and with Gal Gadot, mm-hmm. she said the most important thing is like at the end of the day, the movie is about love and it is about something positive. And the thing about, like, Man of Steel that, like, and, I mean, I didn't even bother seeing Batman versus Superman, but also, (laughs) before I got to see it, uh, Josh Tibbetts, uh, who I do Flex in a Box comedy with, Mm -hmm. he and I were on a road trip to the Hartford Improv Festival, and it's about an eight or nine hour drive, and I think one and a half hours was him driving while yelling at the windshield 
but how much he fucking hated Batman versus Superman. And he'd be like, like we'd be like, time for a bit. He's like, and another thing, he'd start pounding the studio. It was like, that like fight in the bathroom, like, and all this stuff and yeah. so on. But like, it's also like, the other, like the other ones I find, like they were just more like, it was just like this dark, bitter, gritty thing. Whereas Wonder Woman, like it had like, like there's like really great moving scenes and it, mm-hmm. it isn't afraid to kind of like put its heart on its sleeve. Like, there's that great bunker scene where then, like, everyone's hiding. They don't know what to do. And just Wonder Woman's like, fuck it. And she, like, just gets out. And, like, yeah. that, I was like, oh, like, I was really, like, emotionally, like, into that scene. Yeah. In addition like to anything. Being, just because, like, it was just one of those scenes where it's just like, I'm not going to stand around and not do anything. Like, I have, yeah. to, I have to do something. Because ultimately, yeah. like, when we look at situations that we come in, like, the real world, you're like, I don't want to be the person that just, like, does nothing and just like stands there. It's just like I want to be the person that actually like stands up for the person getting attacked, and that actually happened. Um, yeah. and I was uh, that like sort of like uh, situation like that where um, this person was being racist against somebody else speaking like a different language on the TTC streetcar. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so, so yeah. that actually happened. And, like, as soon as she was being racist against the person speaking another language, the entire streetcar, like, teamed up yeah. against the person that was attacking her. Nice. Just because it's just, like, one of those things, like, nobody wants to be the victim of, a, like, an attack. Yeah. But, like, it's like that I am Spartacus moment. Yeah. Where everyone, you can use that. Yeah, right. But, like, yeah, but like, where, like, everyone, but you, like, it is like that. I yeah, wanted to, like, fucking like, Sparta kick her right yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where it's, like, you know, like, some, some Wonder Woman type person stands up and is be like, hey, stop being an asshole. Or, yeah. like, you know, stop being... A shitty person and yeah like, and that's the thing where like you know those movies like you know whatever like at the end of the day I know like you know Wonder Woman it's they make that movie for the sake of making money mm-hmm. but at the same time like if you're doing that it doesn't mean that it can't also inspire yeah it can have like a good message behind it like there are definitely yeah. like some movies that yeah they put a lot of money in, in actors and everything into it yeah. but they also have like a really good message that they want to put behind it because if you're putting that in front of like Hundreds of millions of people. It's just like, why not put a good message behind sure. it, too? One of the reasons why Stan Lee created Daredevil mm-hmm. was because I was reading an interview where he was saying how he realized they didn't have any superheroes who had disabilities. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to do, like, what if there was a superhero who had to overcome, like, a really big disability? And, like, I mean, he has... I mean, that's this, the biggest one. Like, you can't sure. fucking see it. Like, you can't see it. And, like, you know, like, he has sort of these heightened senses. Mm-hmm. So he does kind of have a superpower. But at the same time, like, he's not super strong. He can't fly or do any of that stuff. He's just, like, very aware and super keen and all that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And that, like, is really cool to see. And so I think at the same t- like, at the end of the day, like, you know, I love the indie films. I saw, speaking of Taika Waititi, I saw Jojo Rabbit, which yeah. if you haven't seen. I, I don't think like, I've seen. Super funny. It's very, like, uh, like, I mean, there's definitely some dark jokes because, like, mm-hmm. The opening scene is about two kids excited to go to Hitler Youth Camp, <laughs> but it's a movie about, uh, like, uh, you know, two people, like a Jewish person and a like, you know, Hitler fanatic, mm-hmm. learning to like see eye to eye, and then learning like one person learning like how intolerance is actually hurting the world and how to like you know be yeah like you know more of a like supportive person and how they come together and it's probably like the best message I've seen out of. Any like World War Two or like you know Holocaust movie in a long long yeah, time. Yeah, because usually they're just like let's just kill Hitler. Yeah, that's really or like it's like that, or it's like a really like, or it's really sad, mm-hmm. you know, and like and not that those movies aren't also important too, because mm-hmm. it's like this horrible horrific thing that happened. Yeah. But I just thought it was really great to see a movie, uh, like you know, use again like using the humor to disarm you, and then you realize like oh right, there's a really sweet thoughtful message. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice when they have like different like views of like of, like, major events, because, like, even, like, uh, the Japanese side of, like, the whole World War II yeah. was, like, wasn't it, like, the letters to Iwo Jima? Yeah, there was the they, Jima. So they had, like, the American, like, point of view from, like, them, story yeah. language, and then they also had, like, another movie where it was, like, the Japanese point yeah. of view, where it was, like, I like when you're doing that, because, like, it, it, you should have two sides. Like, you shouldn't just base it off of, like, one side of whatever happened. Like, you yeah. should see the other side and then make a judgment based off of, like, what you believe, obviously, is good, but, like, also, like, what society does, uh, like deems is like normal. Yeah, for sure. And so I think that was really cool to see. Um, so I am like, yeah, I'm, and I'm, so I'm definitely looking forward to the Wonder Woman one. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the Black Widow one because she, she was a character who at first I wasn't as interested in, but the new trailer looks cool, like this mm-hmm. sort of like sort of spy thriller, which is kind of neat. Back in uh, Russia. But that, did they go to Budapest? 
Yeah, I that's what know, I'm like, that's... They know Jeremy Renner's in it, so I was okay. like, I'm sure if they'll they do not that. fucking go to Budapest yeah, in this sure. fucking movie. Then I will never so see good. another Marvel movie again. Because I mean, like, what? Ten movies of, like, Scarlett Johansson. They're like, oh, that shit back in Budapest. Yeah. Like, Jeremy Renner, oh, that stuff back in Budapest. What yeah. the fuck happened in Budapest? Yeah. You guys were just mentioning Budapest and not going any information about it. For sure. And especially after, like, uh, in Endgame, that they have that really emotional moment mm-hmm. uh, together. So it would be really cool to see how... That place. I mean, that's also like we talked about, like Marvel, like you know, taking over all the money and like uh, the box office. But mm-hmm. man, they've just done such a good job of it because they tie things in really well. And like Endgame, like the last half hour of Endgame, I was saying was almost like a really great uh, Netflix special in that like they have all these things that they tie into like earlier in the movie mm-hmm. or earlier in the first Avengers movie. Or also, like, earlier in, like, you know, all of the other Avengers movies leading up to it. Mm-hmm. So it had this really, like, all these great callbacks where everyone gets, like, you know, a nice... Because it's, like, a continuous, like, storyline. And that's what I like yeah. about the whole... That's why I love about what Marvel's doing right now. Like, yeah. like, different phases, but, like, they're tying in their phases. Like, even some of their TV shows, like, they actually do tie into, like, the movies as well. Yeah. And like, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they had Sam Jackson, like, show in because Agent Coulson was still alive. Spoiler yeah. alerts if you haven't seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, no, it's well, been out for like six think, seasons. Yeah, I think in the first episode, like, they have, like, yeah. that was how they advertised it. Be like, oh, like, hey, like, I show, like, that was, like, the, like, secret thing. It turns out he's alive. Yeah. yeah. And apparently they did that just because Clark Gregg, that actor, was just so much fun to work with. Mm-hmm. Everyone loved him. He's, like, a well, perfect, he, the nicest a great guy. guy. Yeah, he was a great guy. Like, yeah. he, he just seemed like a fantastic guy. And, like, him being, like, Agent Coulson, too, was just yeah. fantastic. Like, he did a, re- a really great job since, like, Iron Man. Yeah, that's, that's when he was started sure. doing that. That's right, yeah, where he just had, like, a small role and just got bigger and bigger, so. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, I was actually just watching Justice League, and I'm like, this is exactly, like, Endgame, because it's just, like, a bunch of, like, a bad guy trying to collect a bunch of items and then use right. them fucking to destroy the entire world yeah, and yeah. tell a bunch of heroes just end up stopping them from doing it. That's literally the storyline yeah. for both of those movies and they're the exact same thing. That's so funny. Yeah, like, they just kind of, like, DC came in and be like, all right, we're going to do the same thing. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I didn't like about Justice League is, like, they brought in everybody together, like, right away rather than, like, that. that's the thing that with Marvel, they already had their team, like, alliances, yeah. kind of, like, knowing all of each other, so when they came together already, they already knew each other. Yeah. Whereas, like, in Justice League, it's like, oh, oh, I have all these people on fire, let's bring them all in together right now. For, yeah. Because we need them right away. Yeah, for sure. They should have, like, they, they tried to rush it, I think. It would have been great if they had, like, you know, you have the cyborg movie and you have the, like, Aquaman. Yeah, yeah like you have all of the you build them movies. up because that's what yeah that's what um, Avengers was doing like even yeah. like with Black Panther have coming out where like before the uh, Infinity War movie came yeah. out because it's like let's set up these heroes before like the movie comes out because yeah. we need to like, get that information out for sure because then also like there's so many even like side characters in uh, Black Panther who end up in Infinity War mm-hmm. who were like people I didn't expect but like I was like oh I love them in Black Panther yeah. so if they're gonna be in like Infinity War and Endgame then that's yeah. great like it'll be and I was ta- like I was talking to someone about Black Panther. I really loved because, and I know the second one's coming out in yeah. the next phase. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love that director Ryan Coogler. Um, he, like he always has such like really great things to talk about filmmaking. Mm-hmm. But also in Black Panther, <clears throat> they're like all these like fourteen different people were like known as like mostly character actors. And I think even the guy who played um, uh, T'Chaka, like. Uh, Black Panther's father, mm-hmm. he was mostly like in like an African, uh, like South African like theater actor, I think, or something like really? that. So he had mostly been doing more theater stuff and then brought, but then like, you know, he ended up coming into that. And so it was mm-hmm. cool to see how they were able to yeah, merge all yeah, that. Yeah, that was well. definitely like really well done. Like, yeah. I, I love that. I love all of the Marvel movies. And just yeah. like, if you don't like them, just appreciate them, I guess, for like the cinematography and like the visual yeah. effects. Because you got to realize people... There was a lot of, like, time yeah. and money spent into putting, like, it's bananas how many, like, hours yeah. are put into, it's like, crazy. just doing the VFX. Like, I yeah. work at a studio converting 2D movies into 3D. And just to work on, like, maybe, like, I, I do the depthing process. So when you put those glasses on, uh, fun fact, uh, yeah. when you actually do put the glasses on, so, like, one eye does, like, light going on a horizontal plane. Right, the yeah. other eye does it going on a vertical plane. So when those two eyes meet, yeah. it kind of creates that 3D effect. So when, yeah. when I'm actually doing that, I'm actually creating that, like, 3D environment. So when you see, like, the, the characters pop out at you, that's yeah. that's the environment that I'm creating. It's not, like, shot in 3D. We actually convert it. And there's maybe yeah. a couple movies that are done in 3D, but it's such yeah. a lengthy process. It takes so much time to actually like, clean up that way rather yeah. than just doing it this way. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just, like, doing those kind of, like, 
where was I going with this? I hate when I go off on like the tangent and I keep talking right. about no. it. But yeah, I guess about like yeah, the technology that goes into yeah, 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 because like yeah. an eleven second shot that I that I worked on, it takes me about like a week to do. That's like forty yeah. hours, forty hours for an eleven second shot. Yeah. So it's like a it's lot. Like of, it's two a lot of seconds a day. Yeah. Yeah. And this is just for like a the depth process. There's so many different processes that go down from like sh- you have like the you have the shot that you've you've done. So it's probably yeah. behind a whole bunch of green screen. So I haven't even like edited any of it. So yeah. that goes down the line to like okay, let's remove all the green screen let's clean let's do color correction and like add yeah. any like uh, cgi any special effects and every time you do a new thing that keeps trickling down the line yeah. and then you get into like 3d doing it into 3d and then that gets put into like another line yeah and so you're doing like putting it into like rotos so like people like we have a studio out in uh, india so they create like little cookie cutter shapes yeah. so if we were to like be a, in like a, a a movie right now what, yeah. the, what the art what those people would do is like they create like little shapes around all pieces of your body yeah. so like you're like every part that moves around your body it's like you're creating a shape yeah. so that when we're putting it into 3D it's like nice and clean yeah. and everything's all done up so it's just like there's so many processes that yeah. just go just like after the fil- whole filming process it's like that's why it takes about like a year it takes like three months to film it but it takes like another like seven to like 12 months yeah. to actually do the rest of the editing because it's such a long process. For sure. And yeah. that's what I feel like a lot of people just don't even realize. It's like there's a lot more than just like yeah. filming it. Why can't this movie come out now? Right? And that's why. And the whole Sonic the Hedgehog, you people hated the first one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. That right? was even like you so they had, I think yeah. they spent another like uh, five or six million dollars having to go back. And yeah, you know, redo all the models for just him. to make the just teeth, for that yeah. one character. <clears throat> yeah, just to make the teeth like a little less annoying for and the eyes because the the eyes, eyes, yeah, yeah, the eyes were like very small. They weren't like Sonic eyes because you know Sonic. Oh, yeah, he's he had the giant eyes, eyes, but they were also like connected to each right. other. Oh, so yeah. his eyes weren't even connected. They were like little dots. Right. So oh, it's yeah, kind of like yeah. a little bit weird. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh yeah. wow. Right. Cool. But yeah, yeah. So next time you go see a movie, don't even go see it for the story. Fuck the story because there's only so many times. You can yeah, see a yeah, story yeah, yeah, yeah. before you're like, this is a bullshit story. Just go yeah. for the visual effects because the amount yeah. of, it's an art. It's a collaboration of art. Yeah. Enjoy the people that put the art into it. Yeah. And I feel like that's that's something that people need to appreciate more. For sure, yeah. 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 I feel like this, oh, you said you had to go around. Yeah, this unfortunately time. I've got to, yeah. Yeah, yeah so we'll so wrap this up. Guys, yeah. thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks, uh, Dan, for, uh, yeah. for coming out. Thanks, yeah. Thanks yeah. for having me, Jamie. Yeah. Glad to have you out there. It's Guys, uh, we do this every every Monday, 9 a.m. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I will add Dan's uh, Instagram handle as well. At, the da- at Dan the Guy Rosen. Dan the Guy Rosen. Yeah, yeah for all the people who um, who don't know how to listen, I will have it on a banner. And those who don't know how to read, I will have I have the audio. Perfect, yeah. So we cover Inclusive. everything. Yeah, right? I yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, I'll have, also have it like typed out too. So nice. for the people that just like to read just words yeah. under there. Yeah, Perfect. I'll have it there awesome. as well. <laughs> But yeah, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, Guys, let's peel out.